All right, welcome back to Rob Schmidt tonight. We could see a modern day miracle in New York three weeks from tonight. Our friend Lee Zeldin, the congressman from Long Island, is looking really good up against our current unelected corrupt governor, Kathy Hochul. New polls show Zeldin has narrowed the deficit and could become the first Republican in 20 years to win statewide. Recent Quinnipiac poll shows, look at that, Hochul leading Zeldin by just four points in New York statewide. It's become a tight race as crime ranks as the most urgent issue among voters. Since July, the overall crime index in New York City jumped by more than 30 percent, according to police data. And Congressman Lee Zeldin joins us now. And, sir, it's good to have you on. Uh, Quinnipiac poll shows you drawing 37 percent support with voters in New York City, very blue in New York City. Hochul's got 59 percent. In your estimation, how much of New York City do you need to win to win the state? We don't need 37 uh, percent. Even if we're able to get to 35 percent, that's a, a great number to hit. Uh, we just have to make sure that all throughout the entire state that everyone's working hard. I'm, I'm from Long Island. My congressional district is on Long Island. Uh, we need to make sure the numbers come up there. But really all across the entire state from the Hudson Valley to these other regions, uh, we have an organization. We have energy on the ground. We have issues on our side. Uh, but we don't need... 37 percent of the vote in New York City in order to win statewide. Uh, we're in really good shape just by getting to 35. So uh, we're very happy with where these numbers right. are. Uh, everything's trending in the right direction. We feel very good about being victorious three weeks from today. If, if Republicans will just come out and vote, and, and that's what we got to make sure that they do, uh, it can be a game changer uh, in this state. The, 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 the crime in, in New York, of course, is a big part of why I think they would come out and vote uh, in New York City, because it's been terrible. The subway murders at the highest levels in 25 years were going back to times when it was really bad in New York. That's what de Blasio and, and, and you know, what, what we've seen over the last uh, eight years, 10 years has been so awful. Uh, the violence almost an everyday occurrence. The video you're seeing here, we spoke to this woman last week. She could lose her eye after that attack. She was just going to work. Uh, you got people being pushed off train tracks. Um, tell us how critical it is that we get a change in leadership in this state when we look at video like we're seeing on the screen. Well, big time. There was just somebody yesterday who ends up in a, in this altercation where he's in, ends up in, on the tracks in front of a subway car, gets hit and killed. You're playing video right now um, over the course of those different segments where there's backstories tied directly to pro criminal laws in Albany. The woman you spoke to attacked at a Howard Beach subway street station was attacked by a, a guy who once worked, murdered his own grandparent was released on parole and violated that parole this past August. But because of the Less Is More Act, the, the parole officer in that case was not able to keep this guy detained. Yeah. So then he goes off, and now that woman, because of that attack, is battling for her vision. It's so unreal. the pro-criminal laws, DAs refusing to do their jobs and not supporting law enforcement, and you're left with Kathy Hochul and one-party Democrat rule, and they all feel like they haven't done enough to pass pro-criminal bills. It's, it's something else. I want to talk about Kathy Hochul for a second because we talk all the time about the crime here. People are aware of just how bad it is. You, you've got a, a governor that, in my opinion, is, is a part of exactly what's wrong with New York politics, this corrupted state. She doesn't want to look into what went wrong during COVID under Cuomo when she was a lieutenant governor. She's refusing to kind of make the moves that are necessary to look into that. She's clearly involved in some kind of pay-to-play with the testing from COVID, giving out these big no-bid contracts to a company that gave her election campaign a ton of money. This state is rotten and corrupted like so many other big blue states are in this country. You see the evidence of it right there. If we don't shake these people up, they're never going to change. And I think Democrats in this state know that they can lose. Because if they start feeling like we'll never lose, no matter how much we destroy the state and how corrupt we behave, you've got a real problem. Yeah, this is truly a campaign to save our state. And Kathy yeah. Hochul is corrupt. She got into this position August of 2021, decided that she needed to raise tens of millions of dollars, and the only way for her to raise the money is to sell out access to her office. You mentioned the COVID testing deal. That was a no-bid contract worth over $600 million. And the reason why she had the power to do a no-bid contract was because she unilaterally suspended New York's competitive bidding laws four days after those people hosted a fundraiser. Oh, and by the way, California, for the same tests, paid 45% less than New York did. So the taxpayers are getting hosed. 
The taxpayers are funding her campaign. Yeah. So the corruption, the accountability is absolutely necessary. Balance has to be restored. And I don't believe that yeah. Kathy Hochul getting four more years is going to make Albany better. It's not going to make life in New York and more affordable. It's certainly not going to make it any safer. This truly be. is a campaign to save our state. I, I, I completely agree. I mean, as much as Hochul wants to pretend she's a moderate, the problem with these people, even when they consider themselves moderate, is that they don't govern in a way that changes anything, that they, they, they allow people, they allow the city itself and, and, and the rest of the state to continue to operate uh, in the fashion that it is now. It doesn't really matter. You need somebody that's going to be a radical agent for change in this state because things are that bad. You look at New York, you've got these tent cities now that they're building uh, in New York City. Uh, AOC, of course, was quick to push them out of her district. Oh, I thought she was the one that was crying at the border just a couple of years ago. W what can you do uh, about the sanctuary state and sanctuary and the sanctuary city status of New York City, I guess is what it is. Can, would you be able to yeah, do anything about that as governor? And, 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 and whatever, what, are, what are the priorities do you have on day one on top of that? There are sanctuary state policies that, uh, that have to be reversed. Yeah. And we have something called, for example, there's many examples, the green light law doesn't allow federal law enforcement to access DMV records. Why not? Um, the federal law enforcement is just trying to do their job and keep people safe. Uh, as governor, I think that you need to respect and pursue the transparency and accountability demanded by people in New York who want to know who's coming into the state, where are they coming from, and where are they going. Yep. And this governor doesn't want to talk about it. She'll talk about some of the buses. She definitely doesn't want to talk about Joe Biden's flights. The flights are still coming in. She wasn't talking about when they started coming in to Westchester, then Stewart, now well, Montgomery. Only, only Ron DeSantis' his flights are the, are the ones they want to talk about. They don't want to talk about when Biden does the same thing, you know. That's right. They're looking for the, the red state boogeyman. Yeah. And here's the reality, ultimately, is that if all of the governors and mayors were all getting along with each other just fine, it actually doesn't solve anything. The next right. day, the problem only is worse because people are still coming across our southern border and things like illicit drugs are continuing to come across our southern border. So the solution doesn't involve anything that gets around the reality that Joe Biden needs to do his darn job. It's securing our southern border, secure, this, secure it, finish construction of the border wall, and catch and release, enforce the Remain in Mexico policy. And the the federal government should have been incentivizing yeah. rewarding illegal entry. And lastly, oh, by the way, stop throwing our Customs and Border Patrol agents under the bus. Instead, you should be thanking them and protecting them and giving them the support they need. Yeah, well said, sir. We're pushing for you. Three weeks out, uh, the numbers look really good. I think people are fed up with this nonsense. I, I think something special could be happening nationwide uh, in three weeks, and hopefully New York is a part of that. It's great to see you, Congressman. We appreciate it. You as well. Take care, Rob.